Hello, it's Noisy Andrew here. I've been designing board games since probably I was at high school, which if you do a little maths should tell you that's probably close to 35 years. Um, but mostly they just went by the by, I never wrote anything down. We just built stuff and played it and it was fun. Um, but in 2004 I designed a rugby game because that's one of my passions and I tried to make it abstract and unusual. And since then, in sporadic patches on and off, I thought I'd have a go at building some more games. Um, one that I did last year, thanks to my girlfriend, who is a, an avid 500 player, which is a, a trick-taking ta trick card game, don't say that with chewing gum in your mouth, um, is Tricky Pirates. I thought I'd take the time here to explain exactly how it works. So here's how the game works. Everybody has a tavern, and in this tavern you will get pirates. When there is four pirates in the tavern, you can put those four pirates in a ship and it is crewed ready for pirating. Um, when your ship is crewed, you put it on one of the two oceans on either side of the board and it enters the island area where the game actually occurs. You'll notice the map's actually uh, done in regions. This is an area control game. The idea is to control victory points. This barrel has a doubloon on the top which represents a victory point. And you control this barrel when you have more cubes, or sailors actually, around it than any other player. So at the moment, this barrel here has three orange and four brown because they're next to it. If you look at the borders here, no one else has any cubes, sailors, pirates next to this barrel here. So this would be controlled by brown, but orange is only a cube away from tying the situation. If red were to move into here like this, nobody would control the cube because red and brown both have four. So how do you move your pirate ships, which are bottle tops in our case, it is a prototype game after all, around the board? Well, it's a trick-taking game. So there's a small deck of cards here where there are three suits. The suits are cannons, cutlasses and the wind. If you're familiar with trick-taking games like 500 or Bridge um, or Up and Down the River, um, basically someone leads a card and you have to try and follow suit. You must try and follow suit. So if someone leads the two of cutlasses, then you would have to try and play a cutlass in front of you if you had one. If you don't, you can play anything, but that card will be worthless in that, in that trick. The winner of the trick is the person with the highest number. Anybody who followed suit gets a little bone, a minor, minor action that's shown in the corner of the card. The winner of the trick gets to do the, the major action in the middle of the card. And in the case of cutlasses, it would be to kill some pirates on another ship. So for instance, if Orange won this trick, which they have, seven is bigger than five and two, they get to kill two pirates on another ship and they would lose one. Actually, I'm thinking of editing this in the card deck because I, I think that attacking combat losses are a bit of a poison for the person winning the trick. But in this version of the game, it's kill two, lose one. So Orange could kill two pirates from that ship and they would indeed lose one themselves. It really doesn't sound like much of a game to me, so, which is why I'm thinking of getting rid of the attacking combat losses. The other things you can do, it's a pirate game after all, is uh, you can play cannons to sink a ship. Um, if you manage to win the trick with a low card, you just sink a ship. However, if you manage to win a trick with a higher card, there are only some ships that you can sink. If someone had played a five in this trick, you wouldn't be able to sink their ship because this only sinks cards zero to four. And of course, the ship needs to be in the same region that you're in. So if you're by yourself and you win a cannon trick, Tough titties. The way you move around the game is by winning a wind trick, because after all, pirate ship sails. So with this one, you would move two ships and you just move them one space, unless it says you can move um, one ship two spaces, and I think there's some cards there that 
that allow that. Um, and you're also allowed to change the winds. Now you notice there's some wind tokens on the board here. They show that you can only sail across that boundary in the direction that the wind is blowing. So the orange ship could sail this way. If the red ship was here, it could not sail that way because it would be sailing against the wind. And um, sailing ships don't do that very well. When you move the wind tokens, you're not allowed to pick them up, move, and then put them back again in the opposite direction to stop people following you. You must move a wind token to a new position or, or switch its direction, but you're not allowed to um, move it, move your ship, and then move it back the way it was. It must change. Um, and you can do any combination of moving your ships and moving the wind tokens. You don't have to do all the wind tokens or all the ships. The corner action on a lot of the cards we will now talk about. This one is get two pirates in your tavern. So you would go to the pirate supply, pirate supply over here, and put two pirates in your tavern. Like I said at the beginning, when there's four pirates in the tavern, you crew a ship and it arrives in one of the corner oceans. The little ship means you can move a ship. And it's just move one ship one. Um, it would be a pretty boring game if the person that won the trick was the only person allowed to do anything. Um, so there's those minor actions. And in fact, over the various versions of this game, I've um, altered the minor actions from time to time. Because initially, um, if, you have print if you have actually played this and printed out one of the earlier card decks, some of the highest cards have no minor actions because you would expect to win the trick with the, the biggest sword, which actually is a seven. Um, but if you played a six and didn't win, then you get to do nothing for the turn. And initially I thought that was great because you gambled and lost, uh, but actually, no, it's crap. So I, I've actually fiddled with the deck a bit so that most cards have a minor action, either add some pirates or move one of your ships. It's worth pointing out that each of the three suits has a different number of cards in it. The thing that we want to do most of in the game is move ships around. So there's actually 10 cards in the wind deck, cards 1 through to 10. There is 7 cards in the cannon deck and 8 cards, I think, in the cutlass deck. you think I'd remember that. But anyway. So, basically, you continue to play tricks. The winner of... Um, each trick leads the next trick. Um, the deck is arranged so that when you deal cards out, you deal three cards face down into the middle of the table, which is called the bilge. The bilge is actually the, the very bottom of a ship where all the stinky water and other stuff floats around until it gets cleaned out, which is probably never. Um, and then you deal the rest of the deck out to everybody. So there's enough, I can't remember how many cards, but there's enough cards so that you deal out to two, three or four players, there's a neat number of cards in the deck, which I suspect might be, I can't think of a number that goes into two, three and four, but that's how I've worked it. At the end of um, the trick and the beginning of the game, there are two wild cards in the deck that basically just do what they say. And I have put it up. The treasure map and the parrot. The person holding the parrot at the initial deal of uh, each hand um, is the person who leads. Uh, the special, they will lose the trick that they play, uh, but the special action is they can s steal a cube off um, someone's tavern. Um, and they do that after the taverns have been populated. As the loser of the trick, they will be the last person to play in that round because you play in order of trick precedence. So the a person who wins the trick will go first, followed around the table in order of the number that you played if you followed suit, otherwise it's just to the left. Um, they can steal a cube from someone, which may stop them um, filling a ship. The other, the other wild card is the treasure map. Um, this allows you to go through the bilge, so you probably want to do this earlier in the hand. You actually win the trick, so it's a good way of defending against people who've played a cannon, for instance, and you're in the area. Um, you win the trick, so the cannon major action wouldn't happen. Um, you don't obviously have to follow suit. These two cards are wild cards. Um, you're allowed to pick through the bilge secretly and swap one of the cards still in your hand with one of the cards in the bilge as a bit of a bonus. 
Usually the game takes about three to four hands to complete. So it's usually about 30 minutes. It's, it's none of my games are long. I believe you should be able to explain your rules to your game on both sides of a sheet of A4. And this game has uh, that. In fact, all the games I have free to print and play have that. Um, and the person who at any time at the end of a trick manages to control three island um, victory points is the winner. So let's, for instance, say we had some yellow dudes here, like so. Actually, with what I've got here, I can't generate a winning condition, I don't think. Um, and I've lost it. Yeah, let's have another one. Actually, maybe we can. So if brown were like this, Let's say Brown just managed to sink someone here. This barrel is controlled by Brown with only one cube. This barrel here is now controlled by Brown with four cubes. And this barrel is controlled by Brown with six cubes. So let's assume that this was here like that. It's still controlled by Brown. Brown would win the game at the end of that trick. So thanks for taking the time to watch my explanation video of my game. Uh, you can download this game, print out the cards and the board. Um, you'll need to find some cubes of your own and some bottle caps for boats. Um, the tokens can just be made out of 200 gram cardboard or something similar. Um, and you can play it with your friends. Um, it's not a very big card deck, so it's not that hard to do. I should point out that the idea of the game came from the desire to create a trick-taking game that was area control. The theme from the game came from my friend Wesley Mont when I visited his house one day for a coffee and saw this wonderful pirate map that he had drawn. I should get him to draw a pirate map for me. He's a game designer and an artist. This is the house he drew for his tavern for Tricky Pirates. You can get his game Cogs um, online. I'll put the link underneath the video. Once again, thanks for joining me.